Okay? Before we go to the next Kriya exercise, I would like to draw your attention to Sutra 30, which describes the effects of the previous one. Maybe when reading that, it starts making a little bit more sense. So, chapter 2, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, Sutra 30, after we learned about Neti in Sutra 29, Sutra 30 then says, this purifies the region of the skull and makes the sight capable of perceiving subtle things. Also, Neti soon removes all diseases of the body above the shoulders. Now try to imagine that you do Neti literally with a thread through your nostril, out through the mouth, and you clean your sinuses in that way. The sutra describes some quite remarkable benefits of neti, which is very difficult to imagine that being the result of a thread through your nostril. But it makes more sense when you interpret the text in a symbolical way and understand the meaning behind it which is simply to develop or to teach the student to develop concentration, mind control. When you start cultivating the brain, mind power, this purifies the region of the skull. That purification is rational thought. People who are intellectually uh, not, not trained, are dumb, are not, not smart. The purification of the region of the skull is uh, uh, bringing energy there to make it actually function as it was designed to do. And you know that the intellect can evolve to very high levels. It also makes the sight capable of perceiving subtle things, which is a direct reference to the sixth sense. Sixth sense is seeing subtle things, things that are invisible for the naked eye, but that you can see through the sixth sense is the sixth sense is about intuition, it's about feeling vibrations, feeling energies. That is perceiving subtle things. That is never going to happen by cleansing your nostrils with a piece of thread. But it is a very logical consequence of mind control, control, uh, concentration, meditation, the path that we are on. It is true, if you do an IQ test now, and you keep practicing yoga on a fairly regular basis, and you do an IQ test next year again, you will see a considerable increase of your IQ level. Also, Neti soon removes all diseases of the body above the shoulders. What is that supposed to mean? What are the diseases of the body above the shoulders? Mental diseases. Depression, but also imbecility. Imbecility is a lack of intellect. So, if you understand the text, then it is clear that neti cannot be as simple as just putting a thread through your nostril. Okay, let's go on to the next one, and it all starts making sense. Sutra 31. Then Trataka is described. Look with fixed eyes at a minute object 
with concentration till tears are shed. The teachers call this Trataka. Again, as with every other exercise introduced, there is a reference to somebody that is required to introduce you to this properly. The teachers call this Trataka. Look with fixed eyes. Then in between square brackets is written without winking. <laughs> Can you imagine winking? <laughs> <laughs> that is translation by a Dutch translator. And he, of course, he meant blinking. So, look at the minute object with fixed eyes without blinking. You know what they do? They put a needle on a thread and they dangle it in front of their eyeball with the point coming very close to the eyeball and then not blinking. And they think, yeah, this is Trataka. And I even start to shed tears. So, totally in line with the text. Yoga hardly ever refers to the physical functions. When they do, there's always a symbolical, a meaning behind the symbolism. Trataka is the introduction, the first step on the ladder of meditation. Looking at a fixed object, no, looking at a minute object with fixed eyes, without blinking. Let me tell you this in other words. You're listening to Nada, concentrating without allowing distraction. You're, you're looking at a fixed object, Nada, you look with fixed eyes, concentration, at a minute object, Nada, without blinking, without distraction to other objects or subjects. With concentration till tears are shed. Have you noticed people here who meditate before coming to this class? People who meditate for more than 15 minutes 20, 30, 40, 50, one hour. Nobody with experience meditating so long. Have you noticed at the end of the meditation that your eyes are wet? There you have it, until tears are shed. Meditation leads to wet eyes. Don't ask me why, but it is a natural phenomenon. And it totally makes sense. Look with fixed eyes on a minute object, which is nada for us. You can, you can use, you can sit in meditation and put an apple in front of you and contemplate the apple. That's possible. But this is for educated people, for conditioned people. Our fixed object is nada, in the center of Ashna Chakra. Blinking is other language for distraction, which happens all the time. You try to concentrate on nada, but there are always thoughts occurring. That is symbolically described as blinking. 
you try to avoid the distractions in order to intensify the con concentration. But meditation, real meditation, starts with concentration. If you're not able to strongly concentrate, the condition of meditation simply doesn't occur, doesn't appear. So you have been very gradually introduced to concentration on nada as an illiterate person would have been introduced. We started with nada in lesson one. Officially, it starts today. What do you do when you're in, in distracted? First of all, you have to be conscious of the distraction. So you sit there, you concentrate on nada, then you notice that you're thinking about uh, the appointment that you have after the yoga class. Very natural, it's Saturday, and you're going to have a nice meal uh, in Hebangchon or somewhere in Gangnam with, uh, with your friends. So it's very natural in the last meditation that you look at the clock and you say, oh, you know, I wish it was finished. But, but we have to finish the meditation, so let's just get on with it. And you sit there, and of course you're going to think about the food that you're going to eat, the people you're going to meet, even the way that you're going to go there with the bus or with the, with the subway. It's very normal, very natural. But we have promised ourselves a time slot of 20 minutes in which we have promised ourselves to do something else. And we do not allow ourselves to be distracted from that. That is simply a game that you play because the thought will come. And the thought itself is not so important. The distraction itself is not so important. What is important is the moment that you become conscious of the distraction. And then you have to step in and say, no, no, no thinking about the nice meal I'm going to have or the friends I'm going to meet. Go back to nada. Another thought will come, surely. The moment you're conscious of it, you step in and you say, no, no, not now. I promised myself 20 minutes to stick with this. This is where mind control actually starts. It's pure mind control. But mind control only happens if you step in and break the process of the distraction and go back to what you were supposed to do. You are used to this in a less sophisticated way. When you perform a task, or as a student, when you were younger and you were studying, you know that you have to focus, but there is much more freewheeling involved. Here you put the finishing touch on everything that you have already achieved throughout your life in terms of cultivating intellect and uh, ability to focus on performing a task, you're going to bring it to a much higher level here. The reason for doing that is to go beyond normal tasks. The reason for doing this is to tap into this enormous uh, potential of combining your intellect with deep insight and wisdom. It is there where you become a visionary. It is there where you become, where genius is born. Yeah, so it has very practical implications, but it requires that you stop freewheeling. But every time you have a thought, regardless of what it is, sometimes you may even think, oh, but this is an important thought, I have to explore that. If it is an important thought because it is strongly related to self-realization, then look at it from various angles and then return back to nada anyway. You would think that you would lose the thought 
that seems so important because it is related to self-realization. But you know what? The reality is that the moment that you start thinking a thought, you put yourself in a box and limit yourself to what you are conditioned to think. When you detach from that important thought related to self-realization, you're not ignoring the thought or not exploring it further. What you do is you go out of the box. Because if that thought is really important, really related to self-realization, by going back to nada, detaching from the thought, going back to nada, you allow the crown chakra to look at that thought. And that is where you have your deep insights, your realizations. And that is where real self-realization takes place. The thought process itself is only a start. You pick up a signal and you then start to think the thought. You put yourself in a box limited by your previous conditioning. Detach from the thought. You allow the energy to flow again. And suddenly, point, the light goes on and you have a deep insight. Yeah? But meditation is a very dynamic process. Don't believe teachers that say that you must become totally thoughtless, because that doesn't exist. Nobody is totally thoughtless. There's always some activity going on. It is true that if you meditate correctly, that thought activity decreases considerably. That is purification, so to speak. And when that happens, you have more attention for the things that really matter. It's like a computer. If a computer has a hundred programs, it has to divide its energy or its capacity to a hundred functions. If a computer has only two programs, it has a lot of energy available to do just those two things. So when you meditate and you your thought activity reduce, it will never be zero, but it will reduce, you end up looking at essential data that you carry with you. I haven't told you yet about the forest, right? The forest with the redwoods. Okay, we will come to that. But very short, you are a forest that from a distance just look like a sea of green. And there's a lot of weeds and underbrush and overbrush and small trees. Meditation is a process of cleaning up the forest, starting with the weeds, the underbrush, the smaller trees. And in the end, when you look from a distance, there are only several sequoias, redwoods, those huge trees in North America with a huge circumference. Only those are left. And that is you, that is your core, that is your, that is your, your true characteristics. People don't see it because they are looking at the sea of green. The meditator is in the process of cleaning up that forest. And in the silence, you then start seeing the essence of who you really are. The sequoias. We will come back to that later. Questions? Start with Dauti. Simply repeat Vashti, Dauti, Vashti. Then you bring your attention to Nada and you just do what we basically have been doing since lesson one. But you now start taking it a little bit more serious. From the beginning, I've told you to, to, to observe. But the free observing should now be left behind a little bit. We now start looking at a minute object without blinking. 
you try to follow this process. You sit there, you found nada, and of course you will notice a distraction. The moment that you're aware of the distraction, deny it, detach from it, go back to nada. You have to be a little bit relentless in that process because a human being has a tendency to, to be free and to free will. And that it's good to be free, but if you want to condition or recondition yourself, you need to grab the, hook, the bull by the horns. You have to do some work. You started doing that in asana, all kinds of difficult things that no person in their right mind would voluntarily subject themselves to. We do because we know the value of it. And here you have the same kind of exercise, but now for the mind, concentration. If you continue to practice concentration fairly regularly, you will notice that you become naturally contemplative. You become a natural meditator. Yeah. You are reconditioning yourself. Okay? Let's just give it a try. Thank mm -hmm. you.